Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, as we take these few moments to come before you and to meditate upon your word, we pray that your Holy Spirit will minister to us, that you will inspire us through your word, through the singing of the hymns, dear Heavenly Father, and worship songs. We pray that this moment will truly be a blessed moment as we bring all of our sacrifice of praise before you. We, your children, are thankful for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. We're thankful especially for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that as we continue to serve, as we continue to give our life to your work and to your ministry, that you, dear Heavenly Father, will accept us. We also pray, dear Heavenly Father, that when we fall into sin, that you will forgive us. Forgive us all of our sin, all of our wrongful doing. And more importantly, as you wipe the sin away from us, dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you will give us a spirit of repentance so that we wouldn't fall back into the old ways, dear Heavenly Father, but rather we will seek to, when we fall, dust ourselves off and continue to run the race for you. So, dear God, we just want to commit this act of devotions into your hands. And we pray ultimately that all the honor and glory will be ascribed to you and to you alone. Hear our prayer. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
the crucifixion of Jesus. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. I saw one hanging on a tree in agony and blood. He fixed his hand with eyes on me as near his cross I stood.
Let us pray. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word, and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In our culture, last words of a dying person are significant. Significant because it is believed to be the most important message that a person wants to be remembered by. A message or code, if you will, that is left for the family to experience what could be a better life if the words are fully embraced. For many people, the last words are more, almost revered, and every effort is made to ensure that the last word of a beloved person is honored. Perhaps of greater significance to a last spoken word is a corresponding written word, a final will and testament, as it is called. This is a legal document one writes when they're still alive, and the instructions in it are carried out after their death. It is an important component of one's estate plan, which ensures that personal affairs are settled in a way they would like, including who receives your assets and who will serve as legal guardian to your dependents, oftentimes including an elderly parent. To be legally valid, a last will and testament needs to be signed by an individual who's of sound mind and mentally capable. In some jurisdictions, other requirements include signatures of two unrelated adults. The related issue to a will and final testament is the inheritance. What will be inherited by the family members after the loved one dies? It goes without saying then that final spoken words which are confirmed in writing carry more weight than if they were merely spoken. For us, we come into several, several spoken words that are written for us as Jesus' inheritance for the church. It is significant that we understand the value of an inheritance made through the spoken and written words of Jesus. John's Gospel, or the fourth Gospel, introduces Jesus as the Word, and readers are invited to know the identity of Jesus, the living Word, from the beginning of this book. The words expression of his identity in I am words would give further credence to his nature and character so that one would believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing they would have life in his name. Accordingly, Jesus discusses concepts of truth, freedom, slavery, and sin with his listeners, and it would be Jesus' words that will increasingly attract the anger and wrath of the Jewish population who began to plot his death. It is ironic, therefore, that Jesus' words in life attracted his death, but his words in death call us to life. Life. Free, full, fulfilling, and abundant life. This being the inheritance of Jesus' last 
and final testament. Before Jesus died on the cross, he made several statements which can be classified into word. Forgiveness, salvation, anguish, suffering, victory, and commitment. Words which are reflected especially on Good Friday as a way of commemorating the Passion Week of Jesus. One of the words used is found in John chapter 19, verse 30. It is finished. Tetelestai. Tetelestai signals a task that has been brought to a close, to complete, fulfilled. Additionally, it means that justice has been served. The debt, the debt has been paid in full. The picture is finished, and the perfect offering has been given. Me describes it as the greatest word from the greatest man on the greatest day in all eternity that has changed the history and destiny of mankind. It recommends that it is an important statement that Jesus makes on the cross before his death. While each saying is important and they reveal much about the Lord and redemption's plan, of the seven, it is finished, is the one that rises above the rest and reveals the greatest inheritance left for God's people to access through a word of accomplishment, a word of authority, and a word of anticipation. It is finished, a word of accomplishment. For many who looked on on that day, Jesus was a failure. Many viewed him as a blasphemer. Others were likely disappointed and doubtful concerning Jesus. For those who looked on that day, many may have taken those words as a subscription words as a submission to defeat. They may have thought that Jesus had finally given in, realizing that he had failed in what he had set out to do. But this couldn't be farther from the truth. Jesus was no failure. He was not an imposter or a blasphemer. He was not resigning to defeat. He was actually declaring victory. In this simple statement, Jesus serves notice that he has fulfilled the will of God concerning salvation. Moving toward this day, we see a very courageous Jesus heading toward Jerusalem, where the events of his earthly life would culminate. Just a few days ago in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus, anticipating his death, said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Abba, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Nevertheless, if it is thy will, if it might be thy will, take this cup from me and don't make me drink this cup. Being in agony, the word of God says, he prayed more earnestly, and the sweat became as it were great drops of blood fallen down to the ground. And what were those few drops falling in the Garden of Gethsemane? But a smear compared to the blood that would flow now when he was arrested and hanged on the cross. Hear with me the songs of the whips as they ring through your ears. Feel the cracking of his flesh, the splitting of his skin. Listen to the mocking words thrown at him. Smell the flesh, fresh blood as it, as it runs down his body. See soldiers lift him and nail his hands to the cross. A shout of victory? This? It is finished? Yes, by all means, it is finished. My father's task accomplished. 
For scripture records that after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now finished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. And then he afterwards said, it is finished. This leads us to see his meaning very clearly, that all the scripture was now fulfilled, that when he said it is finished, all of scripture from the first to the last in both the law and the prophets was finished in him. Everything that had been seen, everything that had been sent to fulfill on earth, every promise, every prophecy was fully worked out in Jesus Christ. This word of accomplishment or victory cry reminds us that all the requirements for us to live in victory are available. It meant that the possibility of fulfilling God's call upon our lives is already willed over to us. It means that each of us can live from a place of victory as we access this finished work of Christ on Calvary. The victory cry of it is finished means that there is no situation that can befall us that in Christ we are not and cannot be victorious over. The key is in understanding the essence of the word. By its very nature, it is finished means that we, wherever there is anguish and suffering of any kind, that overcoming, triumph, and victory are possible. It is ours if we take Jesus at his word. This word of accomplishment means that the plan of God has been fulfilled and Jesus declared a word of accomplishment revealing that all had been completed. Complete so that you and I may have victory over anything that seeks to prohibit us from fulfilling God's call upon our lives. It is finished is a word of accomplishment. It is finished is also a word of authority. It is finished is a word of authority that confirmed Jesus's power over Satan, over sin, and over death. Once and for all, that power was destroyed. Jesus was enlisted to the battle for our soul's redemption against all foes. He came with a purpose, and that was to provide a means of salvation for sinful men. He came to reconcile us to God. Because of Adam's fall in the garden, all are born in sin and are in need of salvation. Jesus came to provide our redemption. Ever since the fall of man, Satan has been on a rampage. He continues to seek to deceive and hinder mankind. It is finished. He served notice. When Jesus said it is finished, he served notice to Satan that sin had been compensated. He had accomplished the will of God and humanity could be reconciled to God the Father through the blood and the finished work of Jesus Christ. It was at the cross that Jesus secured the victory and proclaimed his authority. Slavery to sin has been broken over our lives and our freedom has been bought. No longer do we have to live as slaves to sin, slaves to fear, shame, and the enemy's lies. No longer do we have to make excuses for living under the spell of the evil one, for in it is finished, there is a way of escape. This means that each of us who desires to be free from the state of sin and believes Jesus' word to us, we can come into the freedom that has been bought with the blood of Jesus. No, 
No longer do we have to find an unblemished animal to sacrifice for our sin. The Lamb of God has already been sacrificed for us and the sin of the world has been taken away. And the best place to make a confession to this is in the power of this word. It is now part of our inheritance. It is now part of your inheritance, brother, that you do not have to live under any bondage of sin, pride, sexual immorality, impurity. No, sister, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, and jealousy do not have to bind you. Selfish ambitions and envy no longer hold the power over us for it is finished. Now when we have the power in Christ to live above these abominable acts, wouldn't we access it? The truth is, brothers and sisters, that we do not have to live under the yoke of old miserable religion, but we now have access to Jesus, a freedom to pursue and enjoy a relationship with Jesus Christ. The power of Satan has been broken, and he only prowls about like, like a roaring lion. He is already defeated, church. You and I are free to live a life that is undergirded in this truth, a truth that makes us free. Free indeed. Free to live life manifesting the beautiful fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, and the fullness of life in the Spirit. Jesus calls us to believe his word that he has already set us free from the bondage of sin and that whosoever believes in him shall have freedom in the now and in the hereafter. It is finished is a word of authority. It is finished is a word of accomplishment, a word of authority and a word of anticipation. It is finished. A word of anticipation is a very powerful word. Matthew Henry captures this by saying, it is finished. That is, the counsels of the Father concerning his sufferings were now fulfilled. It is finished. All the types of prophecies of the Old Testament which pointed at the suffering of the Messiah were accomplished. It is finished. The ceremonial law is abolished. The substance is now come and all the shadows are done away. It is finished. An end is made of transgression by bringing in an everlasting righteousness. His sufferings were now finished, both those of his soul and those of his body. It is finished, a word of anticipation. Brothers and sisters, it is finished is a reminder that man's redemption and salvation are now complete. Then there is the second element of Jesus' statement that is equally important. This word, it is finished, means that while salvation is complete, it will continue to be finished. This indicates the ongoing nature of our salvation. This is so important because it indicates a condition, a state of being, and a resting place. A resting place, not meaning that we should be stagnant, but a resting place that affirms that there is always more to experience in Jesus. 
That is the inheritance that will never run out. The inheritance that God has given to his people that assures that we become heirs and joint heirs to God's kingdom. That if we remain in pursuit of God's best for our lives, then progressively we will experience the outworking of the salvific work of Christ. It is true that any and all of us who make the decision to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and live daily abiding in his truth, that our reality will be one where we mature more and more into the likeness of Christ. It is finished, is a word of anticipation for those who are far from the friendship with Jesus, far from the grace of God, that all is not lost. They too may gain access to the grace-filled life in Christ. You and I can anticipate that Jesus will continue to reach out to us, calling us to come up higher, come up closer, and come up to where we gain greater access of his presence and power. Oh, if only we could embrace the promise of this word, then our anticipation in Christ will find us hungering and thirsting for the things of God, and it will find us being filled, growing from grace to grace and glory to glory. It is finished, gives us a glimpse into a new reality that eyes have not seen, nor has ears heard, nor has it entered into the minds of men what the Lord has prepared for those who love them. It is finished, a word of anticipation. In Jesus' statement, it is finished. We have a declaration of salvation that is both momentary and eternal. We are saved at a specific point in time. It is finished. Our debt is paid. We are ransomed from the kingdom of darkness. And then we confidently rest in the reality that it will continue to be finished because we are in position of grace and stand justified for all time before God. This is only possible by way of Jesus' last and final testament. His final spoken and written words affirm us, affords us the joy of living in the inheritance of Tetelestai, a life of accomplishment, authority, and anticipation. May God bless us as we embrace the truth and power of this word to the glory of God the Father now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, you have given us your word, a word that reminds us that we are never out of reach of your love, that you will continue to pursue us, because you have a good plan for us. That the inheritance left through the cross of Jesus Christ is available for all who will come to embrace the truth of what it means to be finished in Jesus' words. We give you thanks for what this inheritance affords us for a life of freedom and victory, a life of completing what you have called us to, and a life, O oh God, of anticipating glories, your glories on earth and in heaven. And so we thank you for your word. 
and pray that you will add your blessing to our lives as we embrace this word. This we pray in and through the name of Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.